Inflation crisis in America, GM moving out of Renaissance Center, and people 75 and older working more. Today, I read an article on ZeroHedge.com written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers at Zero Hedge, titled Massive Financial Strain. New report exposes horrifying situation. According to the author, you can't add 41% to the money supply and expect inflation to remain transitory. The author of this article referenced Chen Zhao, the economics research lead at Redfin, who said, housing has become so financially burdensome in America that some families can no longer afford other essentials, including food and medical care, and have been forced to make major sacrifices, work overtime, and ask others for money so they can cover their monthly costs. He said nearly one in five homeowners and renters reported skipping meals to afford housing, according to a new survey conducted by Redfin. The median asking rental price increased from less than $1,700 in January 2021 to nearly $2,000 as of February, according to Redfin's data. Well, my friends, I hate to hear about families who can no longer afford food and medical care. Both are needed to survive and live healthy lives. I also hate to hear about people skipping meals to afford housing. When I read information like this, I worry about the children in this country. Are they getting the proper nutrition to develop healthy and strong? I also have to wonder how the financial distress of their parents may be impacting their developing brains. Many refer to America as one of the greatest countries in the world, but we have people who can't afford food and medical care. We have people who are skipping meals to afford housing. In my opinion, something is broken in society right now. Now, some of you might say, I'm just being doom and gloom because you are doing great and so are your friends. Restaurants by your house are packed and the mall by your house is busy. Maybe they are, but ask yourself, how many people are paying cash for their expensive meals at those restaurants? And how many people are paying cash for what they buy at the mall? Many people resort to credit cards to cover the cost of their purchases, and some do not have the ability to pay the balances off at the end of the billing cycle. There are a lot of people in this country that carry their balances over to the next month, and they are paying sky-high interest. This is why credit card debt in America is at the highest level ever. Getting back to the article, the author said grocery prices have become a heavy financial burden for many families, with prices overall rising over 40%. Some items cost 50 to 80% more today than four years ago. In fact, the author provided some examples of average unit price changes from 2019 to today. Sports drinks are up 80%, eggs 63%, sugar 53%, dish soap 46%, frozen berries 43%, sandwich bread 34%, cereal 34%, and frozen pizza 37%. When I read this, I thought this can't be right. These percentages seem way too high. I decided to dig a little deeper and find out where this author acquired this data. Well, it came from a Wall Street Journal analysis of Nielsen IQ data. I know grocery prices have gotten crazy expensive, but I never would have expected the percentages to be this extreme. Now, I understand why some people are resorting to buy now, pay later loans to cover the cost of groceries at the store. They have no other choice. People need food to sustain themselves, and not everyone can have livestock or grow vegetables in a garden. It is truly tragic what is happening here in America, especially to those with large families. I can't even imagine how much a grocery cart full of food for a family of four or five costs each week. I have no doubt a lot of breadwinners haven't seen their wages increase in the past few years at the same percentage as some of the items at the grocery store that I listed off previously. The lowest percentage on that list was 34%, and the highest was 80%. If you have seen your wages increase by 34% or as high as 80%, I really want to know what employer you work for. I am sure a lot of Americans also want to know about your employer. 
Now, some of you watching this video might say, people should just go find another job if they aren't earning enough because unemployment is low and there are plenty of good paying jobs out there. It's true, unemployment has been low in recent years. However, that doesn't mean the jobs that are available are good full-time jobs with high earnings and great benefits. To my point, the author said, total part-time jobs grew by 1.4 million since August 2023, while full-time jobs fell by more than 1.3 million. Hooray, we have fewer full-time jobs and more part-time jobs. A part-time job is likely not going to bring in enough income to cover the high cost of housing, the high cost of groceries, the high cost of insurance, and the high cost of medical care. In this new gig economy, part-time employment is all that some people can find. Imagine trying to work multiple part-time jobs. That is not easy if you work in the restaurant industry or in retail, where they are constantly changing your shifts. I'm really surprised we haven't been hearing more about vehicle repossessions and foreclosures in the news lately. I don't know how some people are able to keep it all together financially. We certainly have been hearing a lot about crime and homelessness in the media. I have to wonder how much of what I've talked about today could be attributed to these problems in our society. I'll let you answer that question in the comment section below. You know times are changing here in America when a company that was the largest private employer in the United States in 1979 is now downsizing from its glitzy Renaissance Center in Detroit. The company I'm talking about is General Motors. Maybe GM has simply placed too many eggs in one basket regarding expensive electric vehicles lately. Maybe it's because of the concessions they had to make with the UAW. It's really hard to say. I do know their annual gross profit in 2023 was down from 2022. When I visited a GM dealership recently, they had an electric Hummer on the lot. I asked the salesperson if they had sold one yet, and he said no, they hadn't. If you've never seen Renaissance Center, it consists of seven steel and glass towers. I read an article today on Yahoo.com, put out by Autoblog, and written by Autoblog staff, titled, GM reportedly moving out of its Detroit headquarters towers. The author of this article referenced Bloomberg as saying, GM will leave Renaissance Center and move its headquarters to Woodward Avenue into the Hudson's Building, which is a new 1.5 million square foot project being developed by billionaire Dan Gilbert, the chairman of Rocket Mortgage and founder of Bedrock. I read that Renaissance Center is 5.5 million square feet. It will be interesting to see what happens to that space that is left vacant after GM pulls out. GM does not occupy all of that space currently. I have to wonder how Henry Ford II would feel about this, since he was the CEO when this complex was originally built. He passed away back in 1987 when he was 70 years old. If you live in Detroit or work for GM, what do you think about the company leaving the Renaissance Center complex? Tell me about it in the comment section below. Today, I read an interesting article on Yahoo Finance put out by CNN and written by Nicole Goodkind titled, More People Are Working Well Past Retirement Age. It's Not Easy. The author of this article referenced a woman who had a 50-year career who retired until gas, medication, and groceries started getting too expensive. She tried coping by downsizing, not driving as much, and waiting more time between haircuts. Once she could no longer afford some of her medications, she decided to go back to work at age 80. She got a job giving out samples at Costco. She is now 81 years old. Here are my thoughts. First, my heart goes out to this woman. It has to be scary to be in a position where you can't afford some of your medications. I don't have as much energy as I had when I was in my 20s or 30s. I can't imagine what it is like to be working at Costco when you are 81 years old. It is definitely not something I would want to be doing. Dealing with the general public at times is not easy. Think about people who try to take half of the samples from your tray at Costco, or think about the people with attitudes that you might have to interact with. Not to mention being on your feet all day, which is never fun when you are standing on concrete. I really feel for this 81-year-old woman. 
I admire her work ethic, though. She is going out there and doing what is necessary to survive. You have to respect an 81-year-old doing this. It sounds as though she is remaining positive about it. The author of this article referenced her as saying she likes observing people. She said some go grocery shopping in heels with makeup and others wear pajamas and slippers. She said some people take one sample and others take three or four. Now here is the most depressing part of this story. She said that she isn't sure she will be able to go back into retirement. She said, and I'll quote, I don't know how long I'll be working. It just all depends. The author of this article referenced information from the Pew Research Center, which revealed Americans over 75 are the fastest growing age group in the workforce, more than quadrupling in size since 1964. I know I've talked about this before, but what is going to happen when AI starts replacing some jobs in the future? What will some of these older people do then? What is the labor market going to be like when older generations and younger generations are competing for the same jobs? Instead of employers having a hard time finding employees, they may have job prospects fighting over a limited number of positions. It is going to be really interesting to see what happens here in America in the future. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.